You're listening to Dotto Tech, brought to you in part by London Drugs. Nobody does it better, except maybe you. Good heavens, December 7th already. Uh, so Christmas just around the corner. We thought we would follow the path of least resistance and just do Christmas-based theme shows for as much as we can as, as we approach Christmas. So I invited my one of my favorite gadget guys on the show today, Akash Sablak. Hi, Akash. Thanks hey, how are you doing, Steve? Yeah, I'm doing just great. And we also have, of course, Lindsay Smith on, who regularly does the show. How are you doing, Lindsay? Good. How are you? Good. Is your Christmas shopping all done? I haven't even started or thought about it yet. I'm well, kind of panicking. Well, maybe with all this gack that Akash has brought out, we'll, you'll, you'll get some ideas. And you can't take any of it because he has to send it all back. I have nerd envy right now. Yeah, sitting next to him, envy. nerd yeah, envy. There's a, there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a nerd. Well, you know what's going on. After we're done here, I let you clean the products if you like. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank anything, you. anything for a friend. <laughs> Before we get into the fun stuff, have you two been following this blow up that started last week with Carrier IQ? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, just the idea of uh, the, the uh, an entire company being responsible for building software on mobile phones that will actually track. Uh, websites and keystrokes and text messages. It's got a lot of people up in up in arms about this. Definitely. And, uh, you know, the, a lot of the, the carriers know about this. The phones, a lot of the products have the phones. I know for a fact that the Apple phones have a built in, but you were able to turn it off on the Apple, on the iPhone. Yeah, they said that was all permission dependent. They've also, they're phasing it out with iOS 5, I, from what I understand. Well, except you have to have iOS 5 in order to turn it off. So if you have a previous version, then uh, according to the information I yes. saw. There's a lot of so well, I, I think, to be honest, I think that this has caught a lot of companies by surprise. Because here's, you have to go back to where Carrier IQ's licenses could have gone in. And they could do a deal with the phone manufacturer. They could actually build it into the hardware and the firmware of the phone. In which case, somebody purchasing the phone, a carrier downstream purchasing the phone, might decide not to enable it. And they might not even, and, and, and so it would almost be forgotten that it was there unless somebody went and looked for it. It might be not be tracking it, they might not be looking at anything. Or, you know, it could be started as early as that, or it could be added to the software, to the operating system of the phone, which is all carrier version dependent. So again, there's all these different places that the software can get inserted. What bothers me is who thought that it would be responsible to be tracking this kind of content to begin with. Well, I can answer that question. Yeah, who? <laughs> <laughs> was yeah, it, you have a look on you? your face. Yeah, it was my <laughs> idea. Well, I think it's the, the the technical support people or the people that are responsible for improving the hardware, and they want the they want feedback from. Fair enough, and 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 in some cases that's absolutely appropriate. For example, here in British Columbia, driving in Vancouver, I don't know if you two do it, but every time I go up Oak Street and I hit, if I'm on the phone and I hit 35th to 41st on Oak, tell us drops. I don't know uh -huh. if yeah. if I've got a telus. No, sorry, I'm on. Am I? I'm on a telephone right now. That's right. If I'm a telus, it drops the line, and it's dropped it for years for me there. If they track that and then fixed that problem, yeah, great. They haven't fixed that problem. Well, not but not tracking before the secure server, the keystrokes that are happening. I mean, the the danger is when people log on to their bank account. They go into an HTTPS server. They go into a secure server. And everything that's transmitted has to be encrypted. But it's not, of course, encrypted on the phone. It actually knows what keystrokes. If they're logging at that point there, they have the ability to bypass all that encryption. And, and I'm not saying that they're transferring that information back and forth, but if it's stored in any way, shape, or form, then any thief that gets the phone, if they know that that log file might be there, they could access it. So that's very scary. It is, absolutely. And they say they store the information for about 30 days. So there's a good chunk of time there where... where bad things can be done. Definitely. Well, my, my concern is, is this information is all on your phone. And it's it's not so much a concern that it's being recorded. It's where what happens to it and how it's being used. A lot of times what people forget is when they have an old computer that they recycle or they even have a, a photocopier in your office that you recycle, people forget to clear the hard drive. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it so many times where people have given up an office photocopier and, you know, some, even the older units have a 20 gig hard drive, which has a lot of data on it. Every single image that you've recorded for 20 gigs has now been given away. And it's the same thing with old computers. And it's going to be the same thing with cell phones now. New models keep coming out every six months a year. You're going to recycle. They got programs to, to take old phones back and mm -hmm. credits and everything like that. What is happening with that information that you're handing back that now? Data, I yeah. mean, anything short of running over the phone with your car, how safe is your data here? And even then. Yeah, well, exactly. They can recover it somehow. I've heard that you should take a drill and, and push it right through, actually drill a hole right through the middle of the hard drive, and that fixes it. That's what I've, when I've got, I know, I, I just learned that a couple weeks ago. Lindsay, in the 
stop when the, that <laughs> fixes it. That doesn't fix it. That destroys it permanently is what you're saying. Yes. Drilling a that hole. That explains her hard hat and safety problem. goggles she's wearing right now. <laughs> But fixes the problem, Steve. Uh, yes, but c- completely overwriting your disc is is, is a question. Because the, <laughs> the, the whole idea behind recycling, it, you know, in some cases, you want that computer to be used again by somebody else. That sort of recycling, other than breaking it down into its into its mineral Just parts. Just destroy it. Yeah. Just, Just destroy well, it. You like the idea of drilling holes in hard drives. I can tell. <laughs> You know, I actually have done that. I've drilled. I had a couple of old computers. I pulled the hard drives out and donated the uh, the rest of the the computer itself. But I took the hard drives. I drilled right through them, and now they act as a stand for my current PC. There you go. See, there's nice some, that's recycling. recycling. That was very green of you. <laughs> okay, let's. Oh, and one report that I saw last week. I got to ask you both. How often do you check Facebook a day? I, I know you're not that big on Facebook, so we'll say LinkedIn. How often do you can you? How long can you go without checking one of your social media feeds? Oh, well, let's see. I'm a digital marketer, though, so I'm on there for business all the time. But personally, I would say... On a weekend, Saturday, Sunday, how long can you go? Uh, I I don't check it. You don't? Really? Well, only if it's for business. Okay. Twitter, I'm on daily, every day of the week. Yeah. Um, Mostly, sometimes two or three times a day. Facebook, during the week, office hours, very, very rarely. Evenings and weekends, maybe once every second or third day. Okay, that's eighty percent of people can't last twenty four hours without checking Facebook, according wow. to a recent survey mm-hmm. of the of the of the Facebook. We got twenty percent sitting right here. Yeah, you guys are you guys are both really unusual, which is why we had. John. I think it's because <laughs> we're immersed in it all the time. We're so overwhelmed yeah, with and, it and, that and it's and you've got yeah. it, and it, you actually want to disengage when you're yeah. not there. Yeah. Well, let's get let's get into let's get into planning a little bit of planning for Christmas. So I'm sure we can get back to some of the other dire news that's going on as as we move along. Uh, and, th- and this is where Akash, you get you are like a gadget guru. Your your website is and now you know dot net. Yes. Where you have where you have product coverage and reviews. So, is this going to be a good Christmas for gadgets or? Are we oh, it always is. It always is. You know, and every year when I think, okay, this is it. I mean, they can't bring out anything else new and exciting. It hit it, hit me up every single time. So uh, you know, well, I've got a list here. I've got a group of uh, items here that sort of will cover everybody on your list. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll start here with the iHome IW1. So it's a it's a beautiful speaker. It's actually got touch controls uh, on the on the top of the device. Now, iHome is a company that's really just kind of come of into our hit our radar in the last what three years, four years. They they had like one or two clock radio docks. They're mainly a dock, dock company, company yes. for iPhones, and, and that's still their focus oh, is, it, it is defi- leveraging iPhones. It definitely is. And, and what they did smart is you go to every single hotel room in North America and you see an iHome device in there. Yeah, yeah, the clock radio is quite and, often. And they work can. great. So now, you know, I, I, I know the hotels that I'm going to, if I'm going to Seattle or Victoria or Whistler, I don't bother taking my iPhone charger anymore because I know the device is in the, in the room itself. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, it saves, especially if you have, you know, husband, wife, you've got two iPhones. One can put it on the dock, one can bring the, the regular charger. So this particular unit takes advantage of Apple's new AirPlay system. Love AirPlay. Oh, just made life so much easier. Built into the iPhone, built into the iPad, now built into these devices. So basically what you do is you, you start your music and you, you throw it to the device. This particular unit, the IW1, requires a home network system. So you, you set it up uh, using your iPhone, actually. So you, even need, you don't even need a, a PC or a Mac. You set it up using your iPhone, find your wireless network, and it sets up inside the device itself. You can use a regular cable, a USB cable, or you can use AirPlay. And then basically... Yeah. So now that's... And then what you would do is you would just throw it onto the IW1. Now, once you... So we don't have the network set up in here, so you can't send you can't, it to yeah, it here. Yeah. So it's all working off of your Wi-Fi. So this one does not work Bluetooth. No. It's, it's so... And, and you can if you... if you are, if you are, It is important you have Bluetooth. You can shop around. You can find some of these devices that I think will take... The AirPlay, because AirPlay will go off or any networking standard. Exactly, yes. Yeah. yeah. What is the iHome, what is it called? The iHome I, I, IW1. IW1. It's about $300. And it's just a speaker. It's not a clock radio. No, it's just a speaker. And it is uh, It is portable. It runs off batteries. Oh. It's like a boom box. Yeah. Boom, so, so, yeah. You take... Put this on your shoulder first. Boom, chicka boom, chicka boom. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, a, that's, no a, that's a pretty cool. I, I think it's going to be a big Christmas for uh, AirPlay devices. Well, it's, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, you're in the kitchen, you're you're cooking, you you bring the music to the kitchen. You're out on the deck, you know, summertime, you barbecue go on and bring your music outside. So it follows you around everywhere else. You're not limited to to a particular room. Yeah, and you not and you also don't, you know, I'm thinking about Apple, you know, just with iTunes and uh, using using iTunes itself, and you, where you can send music to different speaker systems that are all plugged in through your Airport Express. Yes, but that's a fairly expensive option when you think about it having, to have, to have an airport express station at each place that you want to connect speakers whereas this 
A, you could move it around with you, and B, anybody's device without necessarily sharing your iTunes and being on your network consent. So as long as somebody comes to the into your house, if, even if your kid's friends come in, yep. if they've got a, an iPod, if they're on your network, they can send it through AirPlay. Definitely. And if you want to take it with you, just take the wire with you. And now your your iPhone, your iPod Touch, everything now is your music source for portable music. So you're on the beach or something like that, you have your music with you. So once you've set it up once, yes. you don't you don't need to use the network the next time. Is no. that correct? No. Oh, no, so it's just no, for the no, initial setup. No, 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 no. You need the network to oh, run the AirPlay, yeah. But you plug it in. Exactly. You can plug it in. And you, can do a, you can do an, an aux, an auxiliary in. Exactly. Now, it looks like there's speakers going all the way around it. What's the sound quality on that? Like, is it actually broadcasting the music out on both sides? It is. It okay. has uh, amazing 5-inch uh, tweeters. Oh, sorry, it's got a 2.5-inch tweeter with five uh, subs on the side. Mm. Bass, it's absolutely fantastic sound. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it'll fill up this like room. That. Yeah, it'll fill up a pretty big room pretty quick. Awesome. Okay, yeah. that's number one. And that's $299? $299, correct. And you're going to find lots of devices in that $300 range that are all airplane enabled, everything from clock radios to other boom boxes like Definitely, this. Definitely, yeah. Got it. Okay. All right, so again, hooked up to my iPhone over here. I've got Griffin Technologies Helo TC. So he'll obviously a helicopter. Just meant Griffin was for the longest time guys that made basically like voice voice systems for in your car, like so you could plug your iPhone into your car's cassette deck. That was Griffin's stock in trade for ages. It definitely is, and it still is. They make wonderful adapters for the iPhone, or uh, w when you're in your car to transmit it over the FM radio, or even connect it to directly. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of accessories, uh, covers, uh, pads, uh, everything for uh, for your iDevice. But now they've uh, branched out here and got this little toy. How perfect timing for Christmas here! It's about fifty dollars. And uh, the remote hooks up. It's an infrared remote, so it, it's not using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or anything like that. And it just plugs into the headphone port here of the iPhone. So that's that wrapper you have on your iPhone. Yeah. It's a, yeah. And Does it work on iPod Touch or just iPhone? No, it works on the iPod Touch as well. Okay. And then you download the app. The app's free. Okay. You download the app, and basically, once you've synced the two, you can now start... Oh, oh, goodness, yeah. it's flying. It's fly it flies. <laughs> need a haircut? Well, Anybody, really Anybody need a haircut? <laughs> no, you d you're not going to actually make it take off in here. No, I'm not going I, to. I, I'm I not going to. Our insurance astral has that kind of insurance. Uh, that <laughs> is... <laughs> helicopter insurance? Insured for indoor. So 50 bucks, and you can fly. Now, does the RF signal, if you got this for yourself and one for your significant other, because who wouldn't buy one for their wife, um, can will the controls, will the RF differentiate can you fly them two at the same time it's actually IR and yes you can have IR, up, you can have up to three device three channels so you hook it up and you just, it automatically switches to each channel and you can change it right from the app here ABC does so, it have weapons uh, no not <laughs> well the only weapon is is one no. is flying and no and somebody's distracted got, with a, distracted with a helicopter got laser beams look at Guys, all those blinky lights on there <laughs> Well, the trick is when they're distracted by the helicopter, you grab a pillow and you chuck it at them. So, <laughs> how, how, what, what, what is the power supply? Oh, it's got a built-in battery, lithium-ion battery. And you recharge it. You and plug yep, it in. It's, it's a, a USB, USB port. Yeah. You plug it into your computer to recharge it. Yep. And it just charges just like that. Just make it spin. All right. Here. It's. Woo. Is it pretty easy to fly? Oh, it is. And you, there's two ways. You can use the joystick. Uh huh. Or you can use the tilt and turn. Okay, make it take off a little bit. Okay. Because we are videoing oh. this. If you hit me, if you hurt me, this. Is, Oh, dear, it's going towards Steve. <laughs> Steve caught it. It's, yeah, you did catch yeah, it. Okay. It's, not, it's stuck on your finger. Okay, that's it. It's good. Uh, okay. We're going to we're gonna take a quick break and, 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 and go to commercial now. While flight Steve's lessons shaving. here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steve Dotto, and you are tuned in to Dotto Tech. Dotto Tech is brought to you in part by London Drugs. Nobody does it better, except maybe you.